Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a curious case for the disappearance of a very unusual star. In other words, imagine we're looking at the night skies, trying to study this very peculiar star and suddenly it just vanishes. But what exactly happened to the star and other questions are still a little bit of a mystery. So let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. Now I wanted to start right here on planet Earth and actually take you to the nearby galaxy known as the Large Magellanic Cloud. Right there we're actually looking at one of the brightest and one of the more mysterious types of stars. In this case it's a star known as S. Doradus. If we were to take a look at it in a little bit more detail it would look like this extremely massive, extremely active, very very bright star known as luminous blue variable. Luminous blue variables are the rarest and also some of the most mysterious stars in the universe. And here's one in the so-called Carina Nebula. These stars are probably some of the most extreme stars we've ever studied. The brightness of these stars can reach up to several million times the brightness of our own sun. They are also more or less unpredictable, they change both in shape and size, and at the same time some of them even produce these really huge emissions, way way bigger than what you see right here, and the most famous such emission created the famous homunculus nebula that you see right here which was made by an extremely large eruption of Eta Carina star that you see right there, which is probably one of the best examples of these so-called LMBs. But these stars are also extremely rare. There is only roughly about 20 of them or so uh, we know of, and they also possess extremely specific types of emissions that only apply to these so-called luminous blue variables. In other words, even if this star here was really far away, would be able to quite easily distinguish it from other stars nearby. These stars are also normally the brightest stars in any galaxy they're present in, and for example in the Large Magellanic Cloud, the brightest star you see in the middle, that's S Doradus, the luminous blue variable. Every other luminous star doesn't even come close to the luminosity or the brightness of this giant. But one thing that makes these stars unusual and I guess in some sense unique is that they also seem to possess occasional really large eruptions and they are also extremely unpredictable. We don't entirely know how they evolve and also how they proceed throughout their lifetime and what most of them end up in, but we know that some of them can create these large nebula similar to the homunculus nebula. So there are definitely a lot of questions we have about these stars. Many of these stars do possess nebula around them, but we can still see the stars for the most part, they are still kind of visible to us. However, some stars, especially the ones in distant galaxies, may not be as easily distinguishable especially if we are looking for a nebula around them. This is one such star. This image from the International Space Station of the galaxy known as PHL 293b shows you a very very bright star in the middle and that's the luminous blue variable many scientists were interested in studying for many years now. It was very active for basically like a decade now, ever since the original studies that came out describing this galaxy and it was always apparent that there's definitely a very luminous LBV type of a star here, mostly because of the spectra we were seeing. Several different papers came out studying this star and also several papers came out about the galaxy, but because it's a dwarf galaxy and because it's so far away, roughly around 75 million light years away from us, which is about 25 times as far away as the Andromeda galaxy, this meant that other than seeing the spectrum of the star it was very difficult to distinguish anything else in this galaxy. But we knew that the luminous blue variable star was there and it was also one of the few ones we discovered at these distances. And then, suddenly, only a few weeks ago this paper comes out discussing the idea that the star suddenly disappeared. It's no longer there. It's not detected in any of the new surveys and it's as if it's completely vanished from the galaxy, although remember this is an LBB type of star. These are extremely unpredictable so we actually just don't really know what happened to it. There are a few explanations though. One such explanation relates to the nature of these stars and the actual explosions and of course nebula that these stars are able to produce as we've observed with the beautiful nebula produced by Eta Carina that ended up creating this very unusual shape known as the homunculus nebula that technically does sort of cover the star a little bit. 
The star is still visible, but not as visible as it used to be. So maybe this is what happened in this particular galaxy. But the scientists in this paper think that if the nebula was indeed created here, it must have been extremely thick and so big that it covered the entire star completely. We should be able to see the star at some point though, because as the nebula disperses away from the star, it will eventually become diffuse enough for us to start seeing certain emissions from this LBV once again. But right now we're not seeing anything. So if it did happen, it must have been a very, very recent occurrence. Also, we know that these stars can go supernova, but this was definitely not one, because we would have seen something. There would have been at least some emissions coming from this direction, and even creation of this particular nebula did result in a relatively bright flash that was visible a few hundred years ago. Back in 1843, this was known as the Great Eruption, and it was visible from pretty much anywhere on the planet. It looked like one of the brighter stars out there, and resembled a slightly less powerful supernova. So if something like this did happen with this particular star, we would have seen something. Which only leaves one possible explanation that doesn't really break any physics. This particular unusually large and massive star may have, for some unknown reason, collapsed into a very very small, but also relatively massive black hole. In other words, it skipped the whole supernova thing, it may have even skipped creating the nebula part, and just collapsed into a tiny compact object that we're pretty familiar with. And if this is indeed what happened here, this is an extremely rare event. It has never really been observed with such detail previously, and this will definitely allow us to understand how some of these stars can actually transform into these beautiful objects, and most importantly, what happens to them afterwards. If this indeed became a black hole, and it probably most likely has a lot of various gas still orbiting in the vicinity, some of this gas will eventually start falling into the black hole producing certain emissions that we're familiar with. If we see these emissions, it's definitely a black hole. However, if we don't see anything in the next few years, well, I guess we're back to the beginning of not knowing what exactly happened to this mysterious vanishing star. And interestingly, even though the star is so far away, we've known so much about it. This star has been studied for over a decade and the scientists were able to calculate its measurements and its parameters very, very precisely. For example, we knew that the temperatures on the surface here are anywhere from 6,000 to about 7,000 degrees Kelvin. We also knew that the velocity of the wind here was around 1,000 kilometers per second. And we knew that the luminosity of the star is about 2.5 million luminosities of our sun. So in other words, we understood the star pretty well in terms of the actual emissions and parameters. And in comparison to our sun, this star is a huge giant, very very powerful and also very unpredictable. But also don't forget, these are extremely rare stars. The rarest stars out there. We've only discovered about 20 or so, so missing one of these stars is a huge deal for science. We kind of want to understand what happened to it and how it was able to just vanish without a trace. But before someone starts bringing in aliens into the conversation, definitely not aliens. Something else. Something natural. So either a really large dust cloud or a black hole but possibly something else we might have not considered just yet. And so in this particular case, I'm really looking forward to hearing more about this particular region, this unusual galaxy, and this very unusual vanishing star far, far away. Once we learn more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video, but for now, that's kind of it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. I'll turn over, you can also support this channel by buying the Wonderful Person t-shirt, you can also find it in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.